Dr. Holt, and in this video I want to calculate the velocity of a 4 kilogram block that's pushed against a spring, release, slides across a surface that has no friction, goes down the incline where there is friction present, and then comes across this flat plane where there's no friction. We want to find the velocity. Alright, now to do a problem like this, if this is given in newtons per centimeter, go ahead and do the conversion now, because I caught myself making a mistake earlier. So the K value here would be 4.1 Newton per centimeter. Go ahead and do the conversion and that would be 100 centimeters over 1 meter. The centimeters here will cancel out here and here and that will give you a K value of 40, excuse me, 410 Newtons per meter. Alright, so I'm going to set this problem up in this fashion here. Again, there's more than one way to do it. I'm going to do it from 1 and then I'm going to go from 2 and then from 2 to 3. Again, you could go directly from 1 to 3 if you want. I just think it's easier to go from 1 to 2 and then work my way down from 2 to 3. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is set up the potential energy using basically the conservation mechanical energy. Potential energy of the spring 1 plus the potential energy of gravity 1 plus the kinetic energy 1 must equal to the potential energy spring 2 plus the potential energy of gravity 2 plus the kinetic energy at 2. Now I'm going to set this part up as basically my baseline or like my neutral axis. That's going to be my first, I'll call that Na. I'm going to take all my gravitational potential in regards to here. When I do that, I will find out the potential gravitation here will go to zero and here will go to zero here. Now the object's not moving, so this kinetic energy here will go to zero. Now as the object gets over to this location, my spring is no longer part of the problem and this will also go to zero. So basically what I'm st where I'm standing right now is I can say the potential energy of the spring one must equal to the kinetic energy at position 2. Now we know that the potential energy of the spring is 1 half kx squared so I'll go ahead and put 1 half times my k value which is going to be 410 newton per meter. Go ahead and do the deflection right here in terms of meters and that's going to give me 0.34 squared. All I have to do is set that equal to 1 half times my mass which is 4 times v squared. Go ahead and run the numbers there and you will get your velocity in this case as 3.442 meters per second. Now remember that velocity that we calculated is the velocity at position 2. So this would be when the mass would got, got over to this position just about ready to go down the incline. Alright, now we're going to go from, from 2 to 3. Alright, now we're going to get, in, what's going to happen is we're going to get non-conservative work along here. We have friction that's going to do work on the object. So we need to find out what the frictional force is. So what I like to do is, usually I like to do it like this. I like to go ahead and draw the vector of mg coming down. I like to find the two components here and the component here. With this being my right angle right here. If this angle here is going to be 20 degrees, then this angle here will be 20 degrees. All right. Again, we got 4. This value here we know is going to be 4 times 9.8. So since this is the adjacent side, this would be 4 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20. And this would be 4 times 9.8 times the sine of 20. Alright, so basically if you draw the free body diagram of the object, just right as it starts going down the incline, we would have this value coming down here, this value going back up here, we would have this value here, we would have this value here, with that being friction. <clears throat> so this value here would be 4 times 9.8 times the sine of 20. This value right here would be 4 times 9.8 cosine 20. 
this would be F a normal force and again in this case or the normal force would be the same as 4 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20 and this value is going to be our friction kinetic friction all right so now to find your kinetic kinetic friction we know kinetic friction is always going to equal to our normal force I should put vectors on here really normal force times mu of k now mu of k in this problem I wrote this as just cf that is coefficient of kinetic friction here 0.3 Alright, so when we sum the forces in the y direction, where I'm out in this direction, be y, then I'd get, like I said, we will get immediately, we would get the normal minus 4 times 9.8. Again, I'm just kind of repeating this. Cosine 20, so as stated earlier, F normal is equal to 4 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20. So now all we have to do is go ahead and multiply that by 0.3 and we'll get our frictional force. So our kinetic frictional force is going to be F normal, which is this value here, times 0.3. And when we do that, we will get a value. Sorry, I do not. Let me run that real quick. I see what I guess so I can get that for you. So 4 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20 times 0.3. And that gives me 11.0507. So 11.05, I'll call it 1 newtons. Again, that is going this direction right here. All right, so the work that's being done, now you, it's, friction's going to do negative work because it's pointing up and we're moving this way. So the work done by the non conservative force friction is going to equal to negative 11.051 times my distance which is 0 0.80 meters or 80 centimeters so when we do that we will get a non-conservative work being done of negative 8.846 sorry 06 joules all right so now we're ready to go from position 2 to position 3 and I'll show you what we're doing here we're going to go from here to here. We go back to our equations for the conservation of mechanical energy. And we can say that the potential energy of gravity. Now, we're, we, there's no longer spring involved in the problem, so I'm not going to include that. So the potential energy of G plus the kinetic energy. I'll make this, uh, sorry, I'm going to make this 2. 2 plus kinetic energy of 2 must equal the, oops, got the work, sorry about that, minus the non-conservative work is equal to the potential energy of gravity at 3 plus the kinetic energy at 3. All right, so now the potential energy of gravity, we go back to the picture we're letting now we're letting this be the neutral axis again you could keep this I think it's better to move it down in this case I will have this mass which is 4 times 9.8 times this height which is 0.64 so we'll have 4 times 9.8 times 0.64 All right, and then we have the kinetic energy and our kinetic energy is going to be plus 1 half times our mass which is 4 times 3.442 squared minus the work done which we said was negative 8.8406 is equal to now the potential energy gravitation as the block gets down here is zero because we're taking all the calculations of the fit off of this line we have no height so that value will go to zero and then we do plus one half times our mass which is four times v squared Again, move all this other side, and then we're going to divide by 2. And if we take the square root, you will, should get velocity is equal to approximately 4.47 meters per second. Okay? All right, so that's how you work that problem there. Um, again, let me go back to the picture. I work from here to here to here. You could have gone from here directly to here. It's your choice. I think, again, just from experience, it's easier just to do the transitions from one point to this point to this point. 
feel like you may need this velocity on some of these problems anyway, so it's good to know how to do that. All right, best of luck.